This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, work has been undertaken to fix a southern cemetery slip. The University of Otago, in association with Catalyst Trust, are holding the Winter Symposium 2017 in Queenstown tonight. And Southland is looking to trace their family history should head to the Invercargill City Library this week. Kia good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Work is underway to repair a slip at the Southern Cemetery caused by the floods in Dunedin two weeks ago. The slip is one of more than 200 being repaired on Dunedin City Council roads and reserves. The total bill to repair flood damage infrastructure is expected to be several min million dollars. Diggers turned their attention today to a slip at the Southern Cemetery, part of the $700,000 Dunedin City Council clean-up operation to fix the slips caused by flooding two weeks ago. I'm Rosella Bone here at Dunedin Southern Cemetery where work is being undertaken to repair a retaining wall. It's one of hundreds of sites around the region where slips have occurred following recent rain events. Acting Parks Operations Manager Gareth Jones says no graves were disturbed in the cemetery slip. We had the, our contractors check on site, unfortunately there's been no damage or any effect to the graves. Otago Peninsula was one of the worst hit areas, but slips also occurred in West Harbour, Henley, Saddle Hill, Brighton, Seacliff and Outram. Two contractors are working on the slip and as yet it is uncertain when the work will end. So we're still waiting on a geotechnical assessment which will be able to give us quite clear direction on um, the next steps, but we're waiting for the experts to come back to us on that. Our, our main, our main um, aim at the moment is to basically ensure that it's safe and that there's no more impact onto the, to the public and to the road. So at the moment DCC are um, covering the cost and, and that needs to be worked through with the central government and the NZTO. The council is still gathering information about the extent of the damage caused by other slips around the city. Ozell Labone, The South Today. The Southern District Health Board did not go ahead with the recommendation to issue helmets to mental health staff. Yesterday, the Otago Daily Times reported the board issued helmets after two assaults in which nurses were punched in the head area. The information was in a written response to an Official Information Act request. However, Mental Health Nursing Director Heather Casey says the helmets were a recommendation only. She says it was discussed at a clinical level around one particular patient and a decision was made that helmets were not required as the acute situation had resolved. The University of Otago, in association with the Catalyst Trust, is holding the Winter Symposium 2017 in Queenstown tonight. The event will feature speakers discussing issues important to the region, including water quality, tourism and the environment. The panel will discuss what is causing problems in our lakes, including Lake Wakatipu, the degradation of alpine lakes, growing the economy and also protecting the environment. The discussions also cover tourism pressures and whether international tourists should be levied on arrival to help pay for conservation work and visitor infrastructure. Queenstown's Water Symposium will take place at the Copthorne Hotel and Resort at 7pm. The Dunedin City Council has rescheduled an open day to discuss road safety at the Otago Peninsula. On Wednesday, August the 16th, Council staff will be on hand to answer questions about the Peninsula Connection Road. Plans and displays are to be due to be up at McAndrew Bay Hall from 3pm to 7pm. The Council is inviting people to call in and look at the updated plans and provide feedback. Southlanders looking to trace their family history might consider heading to the Invercargill City Library this week. The New Zealand Society of Genealogists has put together a week of lunchtime talks to help people discover their roots. Sharon Reese reports. For Jay Coote, Ancestry.com has been a vital tool for researching his whakapapa in preparation for his talk on genealogy this week. Today Jay presented a large portion of his family history and the methods he used to find the information at the Invercargill City Library for Family History Month. What I'll be doing is going, starting with my, I was going to focus on my mum and her side, so I'll go through um, my mum and the Coote side where my, my last name has come from and then on her mother's side it'll, it'll follow a path of her 
of the Māori heritage of mine, which um, can be recorded, which I've found is recorded right back to about 1400. Jay says he's found some humorous facts about his family name and family members during his research. I think about my last name and um, it derived from, well, it, our coat of arms says that it's a coot bird and that we're a noisy bunch of people. But then there's uh, another accounts where some people were silly old coots and they were sort of you know, maybe f you know, infamous for their silly behaviour. Roger Washbourne, who yesterday gave an introduction to genealogy, says people researching their family history is taking off around the globe thanks to an easier means of doing so. Apparently it's the second biggest hobby in the country, and globally in fact, uh, and I think it's partly because information is now much more readily available than it has in the past, and there just seems to be a general interest in people's roots and where they came from and how they got there and why they got there and those sort of things, which is what the genealogists actually takes time to do. Family History Lunchtime Talks will be held until Friday, August 11 at the Invercargill City Library. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, truck driver has not been charged with causing the death of a four-year-old passenger. Completion date of the Taramaku Bridge is set for next August 2018. And Southlanders with a hankering for unpasteurised raw milk will, not, will be able to buy it almost straight from the cow. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off, possum, merino possum, pure wool, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made, 25% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Men's Wear, it fits. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second hand books. With the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. Grandad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz We're a 25 Moreau place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush, but the high-speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoua Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30.
Welcome back. A man who crashed a truck has not been charged with causing the death of a four-year-old passenger. The accident occurred in January when Ross William Smell drove his unlicensed truck off the highway near Edendale while trying to let other vehicles pass. The 12-tonne truck rolled down a grass bank through a fence and came to rest on its side. One of the passengers, a four-year-old boy, later died in an ambulance. The defendant was not charged with causing the fertility of death because the cause of death was ruled to be a cardiac arrest. There is a steady progress in the construction of the 25.8 million Tauramaku Bridge on the West Coast, with completion dates set for next August 2018. The bridge, 15 metres, kilometres south of Greymouth, with the temporary platform used for heavy cranes, now extending across three quarters of the Tauramaku River, with the main bridge piles being driven from the northern end. The new concrete structure between the existing road rail bridge and the temporary crane bridge will span 250 metres, rising 10 metres above the riverbed. The rail overpass on the southern side of the bridge is now under construction and with the abutments close to completion. The old road rail bridge will eventually be used solely for rail. Southlanders with a hankering for unpasteurised raw milk almost straight from the cow will now soon be in luck. A new business is planning to offer the milk to the public. The milk will be dispensed from a vending machine being set up near Woodlands, 15 kilometres north of Invercargill. Sharon Reese reports. Nothing beats the taste of fresh raw milk, according to Logan and Melissa Johnson, who plan to open their new business, Farm Fresh South, next month. After working on Southland dairy farms for eight years, the couple have decided to go it alone with their raw milk operation. I think there's definitely a demand for it. Um, I mean, obviously, um, raw milk versus pasteurised, there's always um, some people who won't want to, um, but the choice is there for people to drink it if they'd like. And um, yeah, we've had a huge response from our Facebook advertising so far, and it's, I think we'll be very busy once we get up and running. He says there are multiple benefits to drinking raw milk, and that pasteurised milk is no longer an option for him. Firstly, it's taste. I mean, I've been drinking fresh milk straight from the vat for uh, eight years. And um, also, when I was a kid, we had fresh milk. Um, and shop milk just doesn't taste right to me. It just tastes um, a bit funny. Um, so the taste, and also in the pasteurisation process, a lot of the um, good components of milk are killed as well. So you, you miss out on that. Logan says the Ministry for Primary Industries have strict rules about the sale of unpasteurised milk. The rules changed last year, so we have to adhere to really strict guidelines that MPI, MPI imposes. Uh, so, for example, the cows have to be washed before every milking. Um, we've got strict testing guidelines. So that we can mitigate the risk of um, drinking raw milk in that way. The Johnsons say a vending machine will be installed at the farm next month. I'm Sharon Rees for The South Today. After the break on The South Today, the Green Party is in turmoil as two senior MPs quit, unsecured furniture flying off the back of a trailer leaves a hefty fine, and a Dunedin school teacher has a recipe to reduce plastic use. Seatbelts on for this one and rev it up. Thursday night is Motorsport Night. Proudly brought to you by multi award winning Garrador. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 4738252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Hi, I'm Dennis Charlotte and road racing motorcycles is my lifetime passion. It's a massive adrenaline rush but the high speed crashes have been tough on the body over the years. I almost felt as old as my mate Ian. Sportsville, supporting tendons, ligaments and cartilage. And Energy Plus helps replace the energy that everyday living takes away. Now I feel more alive and have more sustained energy to really enjoy my racing. Buy two packs of Sportsville and get two packs of Energy Plus absolutely free. So call now 0800 502 402. Autumn is here. Too late to sow grassy, but never fear. Ready Lawn is here. Ready Lawn, your perfect all year round solution. Call Ready Lawn today. The University of Otago 
an institute of world-class education and the social epicenter of the city, with outfits needed for more formal functions like the ball and for less formal functions like... The zoo? Are you sure? Yeah, trust me. Yeah, Dad, you'll definitely see me. I'm the one in the yellow and blue face paint and the onesie in the zoo. Hi, welcome back to Alex Campbell Men's Wear. Check out our fantastic knitwear selection. 25% off, possum, merino possum, pure wool, wool mixes. Some of them are even New Zealand made, 25% off. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Men's Wear, it fits. Active Furnishes Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishes Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. This week's documentary is Kraftwerk, the robotic band from Düsseldorf. Wednesday 7.30, Friday 8.30. Welcome back. The Green Party is in turmoil following Materia Turai's unwillingness to stand down from leadership. Two senior MPs have quit the Green Party as Turai will not stand down as they wanted her to. Co-leader James Shaw said last night he wanted to go further and expel the two MPs from the Green Party. The two MPs ex exiting the caucus are Kennedy Graham and David Clendon. The disagreement started over Ms Turo's admission she had lied to welfare authorities 20 years ago. Unsecured furniture flying off the back of a trailer has resulted in a Dunedin man being fined $1,000. The owner of the vehicle was identified by a privately owned security camera on the street. Rudy Adrian has more. Unwanted furniture was left strewn around Dunedin's Vogel Street on the 7th of May this year. Local business owner Nick Black heard the initial deposit of rubbish out on the street. Uh, Sunday afternoon, about 2 o'clock, I uh, heard a noise, found it sounded like something came off a car. Came in and had a look and um, there's a TV cabinet on the road. Just looked like a guy had lost it off the back of his trailer and I figured he'd be back to pick it up when he figured out it had fallen off. But uh, no, it turns out he wasn't interested in it. The situation of discarded furniture became more curious when a second load was also dumped in the same place. Yeah, well in the morning we came back there was a couple of couches there. Uh, so just checked the cameras to see how they'd got there and uh, it was the same vehicle. We'd come around the corner pretty quick and swerved to the other side of the road to uh, and they'd fallen off. So um, turns out he's not looking for those ones either. The green Toyota Prada was identified as belonging to 36-year-old Brent Matthews who was then advised by police the offending could amount to dangerous driving, an imprisonable offence. Matthews stated he was not the driver and he knew whose occupants were, but declined to disclose their identities. He said the driver and passenger were both employed to help clear rubbish from a rental property he owned. Last week Matthews pleaded guilty to the charge of failing to identify the driver. He was fined $500 on each count. Catherine Irvine of the Dunedin City Council said they were still assessing whether to impose further penalties against Matthews for illegally dumping rubbish on the street. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. A Dunedin school teacher has found a recipe to help reduce the use of plastic. Jane Hesson, who teaches at the North East Valley Normal School, explained to reporter Rosal Labone today how to use beeswax, co coconut oil and elbows grease instead of plastic to keep food fresh. Here at North East Valley Normal School lurks a secret weapon in the fight to keep food fresh. And then I made 
hundreds of them. We came up with the, the logo and cover up honey and it just sort of started. Teacher Jane Hesson has started a cottage industry with her son and daughter and is selling these beeswax, coconut oil and pine resin soaked cloth prints at the local greengrocers and farmers markets. While she didn't invent the idea, first encountering it in Australia, her Kiwi versions caused quite a stir in the staff room and on the campground. We go camping and there's lots and lots of people there and we have, you know, big salads and I thought, oh gee, that's a really good idea to cover up because you know, we're outside and there's, you know, insects and things. Hessen says the product keeps food even fresher than conventional wrap, is easy to maintain and can be used again and again. I'm just trying to make um, some more child friendly ones and with the, the, the bees and they have a gorgeous smell too. The wrap can be used on any foods from scones to opened yogurt bottles and fits snugly over dishes and in fridges. To get rid of any creases it takes only a matter of seconds for the material to regenerate with a little heat in the oven. When you've got the lines and if these lines you put them back in the oven for an oven about 100 degrees and for maybe it really doesn't matter a very short while and it just reconstitutes. Easy to care for, inexpensive to produce and environmentally friendly, Hessen hopes her non-plastic alternative will one day sit alongside plastic wrap on supermarket shelves. Roselle Labone, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Work is underway to repair a slip at the Southern Cemetery caused by the floods in Dunedin two weeks ago. The University of Otago is holding the Winter Symposium 2017 in Queenstown tonight. And Southlanders looking to trace their family history might consider heading to the Invercargill City Library this week. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome back, Craig Page. Hello. Yeah, we've got a, another interesting story following up from a spate of armed robberies we've had around the city in recent months. Um, four local businesses are going to receive some funding to provide anti-robbery measures in their businesses. Uh, it's partly funded by police, um, and it's going to allow them to purchase things like exciting things like fog cannons and DNA spray and uh, alarms and, and um, also some more CCTV footage. Um, as I say, Dunedin's been like a lot of centres around New Zealand where there, there have been a lot of armed robberies recently. And there's been concerns that a lot of the, the store owners are starting to arm themselves and protect themselves, which you know can lead to even more trouble down the track. Um, so what's DNA spray? Apparently it, uh, it sprays the offender and then it leaves a mark on them, so once they are tracked down, they're able to be traced back to that store. So uh, Like a tag, clothes yeah, tag? pretty much. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it is great. A lot of these are in response to, um, they've been searching for cigarettes and that's in response to rising uh, cigarette prices, tobacco prices, and there's believed to be a bit of a black market floating around Dunedin and other centres as well for that. So nice to see there are some measures in place and, and some of these storekeepers can feel a bit safe because of it. Yeah, and there's a better option than having a baseball back under the counter or anything like that. Definitely. A uh, bit of a quirky one, we've got some history beckoning uh, at the Blossom Festival this year in September. Um, it's the 60th anniversary of, of the uh, the festival and it's the first time a male was going to contest um, what has previously been known as the Festival Queen and Princess Awards. Um, uh, Jeff Afan, who's a member of the, the Alexander Senior Forum up there, has decided to put his hat in the ring for the these awards. I suppose they'll have to call them now the King and Prince competition as well. So, um, Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, he's not trying to make a political statement, just wants to have a bit of fun in the 60th year, so uh, there's no doubt there's going to be a bit of interest around that leading up to the event. I'm sure uh, it'll look very dapper on the festival card as well. We've got an interesting photo of him on tomorrow's paper as well anyway with his crown. So uh, Look forward to seeing that one. Good. Uh, Targo MPC rugby team named today. We've just got Super Rugby out of the way. Now we focus on the provincial championships. Um, Sam Anderson here has been named to Targo's captain. And a, a squad, I guess, that's a bit light on experience. We've had a few uh, injuries with key players and, and a couple moving north. So uh, it'll be an interesting season for them. They start on October 17, and the, uh, sorry, August 17 with a home match. So, uh, yeah, back to rugby again. Again. And <laughs> finally on our fresh food pages, um, we're looking at food for, for children um, with uh, Bevan Smith from Riverstone Cottage. He's got some good tips on how to keep the, the hunger busters away for your children. And also there's been some success for local businesses at the New Zealand Cuisine Awards, so we've got all the details there on that as well. Oh, fantastic. And it's never too soon to get children into cooking for themselves. No, they, don't, they don't have any difficulty eating it. It's just... Uh, yeah, <laughs> wonderful. Hey, thanks, Greg. Thank you.
Great, and now look at what's happening in tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silverhorn Sportsville. Starting with today's southern view, taking off the wane wintry sun over Dunedin's southern cemetery. Looking at the situation, southern districts can expect a mild and northerly airflow for a few days with mostly fine and dry conditions. Friday can expect some cooler southwesterlies continuing over the weekend. To the southern outlook, Balclutha, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden can all expect northwest easterlies, some cloud and you're all 13. To the central outlook, Alexandra, moderate northerlies, some high cloud and 14 degrees. Queenstown, moderate northerlies, some high cloud and 12 degrees. Tiano and Wanaka, light northeasterly, some cloud and you're both 13. To the northern outlook, Omaru, moderate northerlies, high cloud and 15 degrees. Timaru, moderate, moderate northwesterlies, some high cloud and 17 degrees. Timaru and Amaroma, moderate northerlies, some high cloud and both 13 degrees. Here in Dunedin, fine tonight with northeasterly winds and an overnight low of 6 degrees, remaining fine tomorrow and with sunny periods and some high cloud at times, reaching a pleasant 13 degrees and 5. Thursday, it's light southwesterlies, 12 and 5. And in Invercargill tonight, brief rain with moderate northerlies with an overnight low of 7. Tomorrow, fine with sunny periods and some high cloud, moderate winds, still pleasant temperatures, 14 and 7. Same for Thursday, 13 and 7 degrees. That's our news for this Tuesday. For the latest news from the Southern Region, you can follow us on YouTube, Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. From the South Today team, ka kite anō, good night. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.